Why, hello there, Sir Richard Cackington III here. Thank you so much for stopping by, and today, we're at the end of Season of Dawn. It's the last day of Crimson Days, and Crimson Days is the very last thing on the seasonal calendar for Season of Dawn. So, unless something absolutely crazy, unannounced, and unexpected happens, things are just winding down and continuing into the next season starting in March. And so it's a great time to look at the events of Season of Dawn and talk about it. I've heard a lot of negativity around this season. I've seen a ton of people, a ton of other content creators say, ah, this season's trash, it sucks, there's nothing to do. But is that the case? Well, time to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of Season of Dawn. So let's get started. So first things first, the overarching theme of this season, like kind of what's going on going back in time with a device that Osiris kind of invented, finding the famous guardian Saint-14, rescuing him, bringing him back, and now having him as a vendor in the tower, and then having a community effort to rebuild the lighthouse on Mercury, and what's overwhelmingly hinted to be bringing back Trials of Osiris starting next season. That whole concept is awesome and it really feels like this season flows into the next if the next is bringing back trials and all of that stuff and as a cohesive theme I think it's much better than Season of the Undying. Season of the Undying was like, oh, there's a bunch of Vex invading, I guess, go stop them. Uh, somehow Ikora is involved, and yet she's not involved at all in this season. So definitely the whole storyline of Season of Dawn, I did enjoy it. And the quest to go back, rescue Saint-14, like for just a small like $10 season, it was some decent story content without shoving it down your throat and making you do a bunch of story missions that you don't necessarily want to do. You could have completely ignored that if you just want to grind for weapons and play the content for the most part. Let's also talk about the marquee activity for Season of Dawn, which is, of course, the Sundial. And I think, overall, the Sundial is a pretty sweet activity. I think it's much better than Vex Offensive from last season, but it's not quite as good as the Menagerie. It does have some differences week to week with the rotating bosses, and it did culminate in a much better fashion then vex offensive with instead of just being a new boss that had the same mechanics it was a totally different boss that was like a mega morphin power rangers version of all the other rotating bosses and the boss fight now is drastically drastically different than the previous boss fights so that is good however because this was really like the only new new activity it did get a lot of wear and tear and anything is going to get old and definitely, you know, by the end of it, Sundell was feeling a bit old and in the middle as well, the different rotating bosses weren't necessarily that different from one another. One had lightning, the other kind of trapped you, the other shot fireballs. Eh, it was neat, but more gimmicky than anything else. With that being said, overall, still much more positive about this activity. But of course, we have the accompanying grind. The weapons, the obelisks, all of that stuff, the armor, how was that? Well, the whole idea of going and leveling up these four different obelisks and linking different ones, and as you would go through the season, you unlock the ability to link more and more, and then you can go in and specifically grind certain weapons, and again, as you level up and level up your obelisk, you're going to unlock the capability to get much more drops. Like, at the end of the day, you're getting four drops for a single sundial run. That is pretty great news, especially for more casual players. Like, if you only have a couple hours a week to play Destiny, and you want to go after a certain weapon, you want to direct your efforts towards getting something good, you can really, really accomplish that with the Sundial system. And the other good news is that a lot of these weapons that you're grinding for are very good. The Steel Feather Repeater Auto Rifle, the Breach Light Sidearm, the Scout Rifle, uh, the Gallant Charge Fusion Rifle. A lot of these are desirable weapons that have very powerful roles. So people are actually going in there and doing this activity to specifically get these weapons. 
But of course, if we're going to talk about weapons, we have to mention the brand new weapon perks that also came with this season. And overall, that is a fantastic change. I actually made a video talking about how one of the most important things that the next season needs, which was Season of Dawn at the time, is a batch of new weapon perks because the loot table is getting pretty stale. And overall, this was again massively positive. However, looking at the actual perks, the really big standout is Vorpal Weapon, doing more damage against supers and bosses, very, very desirable perk, and of course, the Trophy Hunter Snipe Rifle is kind of like the god roll weapon that features this brand new perk. It's very desirable, people are grinding the crap out of it, especially with now Imperium Foundation and all of that stuff. However, that's kind of it. The other perks, a lot of them aren't terrible. They got their niches. I'm thinking uh, the one that changes kinetic damage into elemental damage for throwing a grenade. Fantastic in a match game activity, but aside from that, you're not really going to use it. And if you have a coordinated team, you don't even really need that perk. So it's nowhere near as impactful as Season of the Drifters set of perks. That had firing line, full court, multi-kill clip, swashbuckler, you know, perks that are still so desirable and the part of so many god rolls to this day, I think Season of Dawn comes nowhere close to achieving that. It does introduce some new stuff, but I think at this point, we don't necessarily need more weapon perks. Bungie, we really, really need a design pass on the weapon perks, rebalancing some of the underbalanced ones, potentially even nerfing some of the incredibly powerful ones, but just we need a little bit of a shakeup because the meta has really defined itself with the most desirable weapon perks. And like, no matter which weapon it is, going for Feeding Frenzy Kill Clip is pretty much always the best strategy, right? And that is getting a little bit tiresome. But of course, we also have the armor and the associated armor mods for Season of Dawn, and this was huge. And frankly, this may have been too huge, because the Season of Dawn mods are just better, like overall better, than really any other seasonal mods, aside from maybe taken armaments when you're specifically doing Gambit, right? Like, these mods will give you bonuses in no matter which activity you're doing, and their powerful bonuses. Hey, kill an enemy? Well, get charged with light, or pick up an orb of light, get charged with light, and now you're gonna do more damage. There's really no downsides there at all, other than, of course, the cost to slot these mods in. So these are extremely powerful base abilities. Uh, there's some crazy, crazy builds you can put together with basically infinite ammo when it comes to specials and stuff that you're normally not supposed to be able to do, but you can do with these mods. So it's really going to depend on next season's mods and how powerful those are because are these going to stand out and just be like the meta mods to always use, uh, you know, stuff to get charged with light and then more damage when you're charged with light and that's just what the builds are going forward or are next season's mods really going to have an impact as well and can you potentially mix and match mods from both seasons? That could be really, really interesting but these mods were so powerful that they kind of overshadowed the artifact mods. Honestly, like, no one was talking about the artifact mods because the Season of Dawn mods were so cracked. Like, honestly, those artifact mods, like, I've basically seen no builds involving them. Maybe they make a minor appearance, but it shows you how much more powerful the seasonal mods are because, you know, back in Season of the Undying, it was pretty similar artifact mods, but they mattered so much more because the seasonal mods only applied to Nightmare Hunts or the Raids. So yeah, it, things are massively changing when it comes to making builds, but that does actually bode pretty well for like, hey, we desire to play and grind this content. Yeah, you're chasing those mods. You're trying to level up your obelisk. You're trying to get armor that has the right energy and all that stuff for these builds, so that overall is pretty good. It's gonna be even better with starting next season, Armor 2.0 getting a little bit more lax and you can now change your element for your armor. So you can basically just get like one Season of Dawn set, like full set, and if you really need to change, you can, but that will last you with all these powerful mods, which is overall a great thing. However, those are the main positives of this season, and it wasn't all positive. Notice how everything I talked about 
happened in the first few weeks of Season of Dawn starting. This season was incredibly front-loaded, to a fault. Seriously, Sundial launched day one, and in only a couple of weeks later, you had access to the other two obelisks, so the entire Sundial loot pool was on the table, and of course that meant that you also had access, after leveling up those obelisks, to all of the seasonal mods and so on. There was stuff that happened later on, like the two exotic quests, but the Devil's Ruin was incredibly short and lackluster, but weirdly, if you bring that fact up, a lot of people get very defensive and say, oh, if you don't want the Devil's Ruin quest, you must want the Thorn quest. I don't want to grind for three days to get an exotic. No one's saying that. It doesn't have to be one extreme or the other. You can find a happy middle ground. And if you're satisfied and okay with just doing an activity you're already doing and then playing scavenger hunt for five minutes as a actual piece of content to get an exotic, I'm sorry, but you gotta pump your game up. You gotta go play Destiny 1 and do some of the really good engaging exotic quests in that game because yeah, I didn't think that was acceptable. And then of course you had the Bastion, which I actually really enjoyed the whole process of the community coming together and unlocking the puzzle. But of course, the fact that they put this weapon on the map for a later day and it wasn't clear that we were unlocking a weapon that we kind of already knew about, people thought it was something new, that created its own negativity somewhat unfairly, but also somewhat fairly. The two exotic quests, they both have goods and bads. Let's just ignore them for now because they just added, you know, each one new weapon to the loot pool. The thing is... There was a lot of other stuff, like the legendary sundial difficulty, like that new boss at the end of the sundial that didn't have any accompanying loot. And this is one of the things I really don't understand, and this is something I really hope Bungie fixes coming with next season and the season after that. Because, yeah, front-loaded content is great. Having access to new stuff is great. But you're telling me you couldn't take, you know, one or two weapons from the loot pool. Take out the Jack Queen King. It's just a time loss bounty weapon and it's a new weapon or a remade weapon into the loot pool. It's very desirable. Take that out and give that as a legend sundial reward. Because right now, why would you do legend sundial? For the pinnacle drops? Well, you don't need pinnacles anyways. Like, it takes two minutes to get to the max light level, basically. So, you really don't need to do that content and you really don't want to do it if there's no reward with menagerie almost all of the loot pool was of course available from normal menagerie but then you had the swords available only in heroic that one factor those small pieces of loot were enough to actually motivate people to do heroic menagerie legend of sundal completely lacks that and it's very unfortunate also, it would have been cool if just, you know, again, one weapon, let's say the breach light as a random example, started to become available when the newest boss in the Sundial was available, when the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers boss was available, then you have one new weapon to the loot pool and everyone's hopping back on and grinding for that new weapon. But as it stands, you play that new boss and you're like, cool. And, and you're pretty much done because it's pretty easy to get the god rolls of the existing weapons. You probably had them for about a month now. And then while the Dawning got a new reward with the Cold Front SMG, which was fantastic, like that one thing made it desirable to play and, you know, deliver a crap ton of cookies. And I know myself, I was delivering cookies dust till dawn trying to get the Feeding Frenzy Kill Clip roll with Crimson Days. It's just the bow from last year, and that's it. Bungie, you couldn't spare one more weapon for a new Crimson Days thing? And therefore, like, the excitement for Crimson Days is so much less than the Dawning. Now, again, I'm not saying that there needs to be a new raid with these events. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that Bungie really needs to do a better job of not adding more and adding more because they can only do so much but redistributing what they're adding in a better fashion. Take something out of that initial loot pool and put it as a reward for the Legend Sundial. Take something out of that loot pool and put it as a reward for Crimson Days. And I think that is the genesis of the main complaints about this season, is that everyone had access to pretty much everything in the first few weeks and you got your god rolls and everything was good, 
and then it just ran out of content. It, you know what, that's a lie. It didn't even run out of content, it ran out of reasons to play the content. Especially because aside from the Python shotgun, the ritual weapons were kind of disappointing this season. And of course, if we're going into the ugly category, it's gotta be PvP. PvP is just getting no love, despite Bungie saying that they have a renewed focus on giving love to PvP. Most PvP players are incredibly dissatisfied with the state of the Crucible, and that's a whole can of worms and topic on its own, but the fact that, you know, even if you're an outsider, even if you don't even touch the Crucible, just looking in, you can see that, wow, aside from that one ritual weapon, the PvPers got, like, nothing. Bungie added a bunch of new weapons to the legendary world drop loot pool, which is a great thing, honestly, that should be in the positive section, but, like, those are just general rewards. They don't put you in any direction. Why couldn't Bungie add a couple of things to the Crucible loot table? Like, is that so hard? And again, not more things. Take the Last Hope and the Fusion Rifle out of the Legendary Drop loot pool and put them in the Crucible loot pool, and suddenly, bada bop boom pow, you got a reason to play PvP. And the fact that Bungie is not doing this just blows my mind. Again, it's not even the fact that they're not adding enough weapons. They're adding a ton of weapons. It's just to the wrong places. But with all of that being said, I think you also need to put all of this in the perspective of it's $10. It's a $10 season and for $10, I think most players definitely got their money's worth. Even just for the seasonal mods, because they're going to be relevant going forward, you probably cut your money's worth. But I do definitely see the legitimacy of a lot of the complaints of this season, the terrible allocation of the rewards, which led to a lack of motivation, especially in the second half of this season. There really hasn't been a huge reason to play in a while, and I think Bungie needs to start planning this out better. There, I think they are definitely falling behind when it comes to the foresight category and we can see that in the imperium foundation this is a cool event in the sense that it's one of the best ways to grind gear ever like if you want a god roll holy crap there are so many resources and so many chances to farm like, hundreds of time lost bounties it's insane but whose idea was it that you could only donate a hundred fractaline at a time and it was on a three second timer like that's insane. Whose idea was it that you can only pick up five resources at a time for one legendary shard at the spider? That stuff doesn't make sense. And again, it puts to a little bit of a lack of foresight. Bungie just makes all of these weapons and all of this stuff and throws it into the like, main activity and doesn't even consider the legend version of it. Doesn't even consider these other parts of the game. So I think that that stuff needs to be really planned out better going into the next seasons. But those are my thoughts on Season of Dawn. What about you guys? Did you enjoy this season? Do you think it was absolutely amazing? I certainly think for casual players, this was definitely one of the better seasons in terms of having easy access to getting loot, especially getting geared up. But the lack of motivation, the complete ignorance pretty much of PvP, that stuff is definitely in the negatives category. Again, tell me what you guys think. And I hope you enjoyed this video, found it interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.